What does Christian, Islamic, Buddhist, Zoroastrian, Hindu, and Greek art all have in common? That's right, you guessed it, the halo. And you may not even realize it, but in modern and ancient art, halos are everywhere. Sometimes halos look like this, a flat, circular shape behind the head of an angel, saint, or religious figure. Other times, halos look more like this. It's a bit more of a three-dimensional type halo, and the disc is turned downward, and it usually glows. Yet other times, halos feature rays, like those on the Statue of Liberty and on this ancient Greek coin of Ptolemy III. Although less common, some halos are squares, like this picture of Pope Pascal I. Square halos were pretty much only used to depict saints, and particularly when the portrait of the saint was made while they were still alive. Almost all halos are gold, white, or yellow in color, but they can also be depicted as red with flames, especially in Islamic and Persian art. There are countless paintings from the ancient world that feature halos, and these paintings span different generations, cultures, and religions. But halos aren't just a thing of the past, they have made their way into our modern culture, especially in stained glass windows and churches, but also in movies and TV shows. And my favorite is the old good guy, bad guy shoulder routine. So where does the concept of halos come from? There's nowhere in the Torah or the Christian Old and New Testaments or even from the Quran that mention halos for their angels or for their religious figures. If it doesn't come from these sources, why do all Abrahamic religious traditions, at least at some point throughout their history, feature halos? Historically, where do halos come from and what do they represent? The word halo comes from the Greek word halos, which actually has a number of different meanings, like threshing floor and grain on the floor. But for our purposes here in this video, halo also means disc, especially when referring to the sun, moon, or even a shield. Other words for halo are nimbus, aura, oriel, glory, or glorial. All of these terms have something in common in terms of how they are defined, and that is that they are luminous, or they give off light. And this is our first clue to figuring out the historical concept of halos. They have something to do with light. It seems the concept of halos developed before it was actually drawn or depicted in ancient art. The perception that divine beings and special religious figures emanate light is an ancient concept that goes all the way back to ancient Sumerian, Greek, and even Jewish religion. For example, consider how Homer in the Iliad describes Achilles. Achilles, dear to Zeus, stood up. Around his strong shoulders, Athena threw the tasseled goatskin shield, and around his head the goddess made a golden cloud. Now a blazing flame burned from the man. As when smoke goes up from a city and reaches the heavens from afar, from an island that the enemy has surrounded, all day long the besieged have fought a savage battle from the city. But when the sun goes down, beacon fires burst forth close by one another. And high above shines the glare, visible to all who live nearby, so that the dwellers around may come in their ships and avert destruction. Even such a brilliance went from the head of Achilles, all the way to the heavens. This reference from Homer could be more about the shield that Athena gave to Achilles, more so than Achilles himself, considering before this, Achilles' head wasn't shining. But still, this is an early example of a godlike figure shining with something bright behind his head. This sounds a lot like a halo to me. And considering the Iliad was written sometime in the middle of the 8th century BCE, this is a pretty early reference to a possible halo. A Jewish example of someone shining as they get close to a divine being can be found in Exodus 34, which says, When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the covenant law in his hands, he was not aware that his face was radiant and shining, because he had spoken with the Lord. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, his face was radiant, and they were afraid to come near him. Throughout the centuries, both modern and ancient artists have tried to depict Moses' shining face, and they did this in various ways. Sometimes like this, with beams of light coming out of his head, and at other times like this, with horns coming out of his head. The horns coming up from Moses' head don't represent anything demonic, but they represent the radiance and the glory that shone in his face when he came down from Mount Sinai after talking with God. Even though these two examples aren't halos in the proper sense of the word, they do show us that ancient authors and thinkers often portrayed the closeness to God or the gods with images of light and radiance. Light has always been associated with divine things. And light has also been associated with good things like wisdom and power and peace and joy. 
We see this even in our modern world today, in movies like Star Wars. Light equals good, dark equals bad. And when we think of heaven, we think of heaven as radiant and bright and glorious. But when we think of hell, we think of hell as a dark, dingy, kind of cave-like place. Even the authors of the Dead Sea Scrolls called themselves the Sons of Light because of their closeness to God and because they believed they were chosen by God. In ancient Egypt, we see depictions of the sun god Ra with a circular disk of the sun above his head. And even though the disk of the sun was above his head, this still may have influenced other religious traditions to see God or the gods as divine light bearers. I've listed these ancient Greek, Jewish, and Egyptian sources not because they give us the first drawing of a halo, but because it proves a point. The point that the idea or concept of a halo likely originated before it was ever illustrated in ancient art. The first ever depiction or drawing of a circular disc halo in art comes from ancient Iran, dating to around 300 BCE. Mithra, the deity of light in Zoroastrianism, is the first ever drawing representing a god having a halo. Mithra was given a halo to show his divine glory. This is known as Kavarina in Zoroastrianism, and it is directly connected to the radiance of the sun, and the halo was a great way to relate this unique quality that Mithra had. We know from archaeology and anthropology that the earliest religions of ancient Mesopotamia centered around worshiping the sun, and perhaps even the oldest spiritual practice known to mankind, regardless of culture, was sun worship. And this makes sense, because the sun is so important for everything we do as humans. Without the sun, crops wouldn't grow. Without crops, animals would have nothing to eat. And without animals, humans and everything on earth would die. And so it makes sense that ancient cultures worshipped the sun. It's also fascinating that the word halo in Greek is halos, which is cognate to the word helios, meaning sun. This is not by accident, considering halos likely originated from sun-worshipping religious movements. The depiction of the halo in art likely spread from ancient Zoroastrian Persians to other cultures and religions, including Hinduism, Buddhism, and later to Christianity and Islam. The sheer speed at which the iconography of the circular disc halo spread is incredible. It spread incredibly fast. Within just a few years of it first being sketched, it became Europe and Asia's universal religious symbol for divinity, representing the closeness to God in the spiritual world. So how did it spread so quickly to these very different ancient cultures? Well, it spread from ancient Iran on coins, depicting Mithra with a halo. This imagery had universal appeal and became a popular staple in many Hindu and Buddhist strongholds. With the invading Roman Empire, Mithra was so popular that Mithraism evolved into a major Roman religion, influencing another beloved Roman deity, Sol Invictus. The Roman Emperor Constantine, who worshipped Sol Invictus perhaps all his life, even while after converting to Christianity, believed the depiction of the halo emulated power and had a strong spiritual connectedness. So he and his successors wanted the halo used in images of themselves, thus leading not only to gods having a halo, but saints and prominent Western religious figures as well. In Christian art, mostly after the time of Constantine, God can be seen as being depicted as having a triangular halo, presumably representing the Holy Trinity of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus was depicted as having a cross-shaped halo, and living saints a square halo. By the 500s CE, halos were appearing in art as far as Korea and Japan. What started out as a Zoroastrian symbol of solar divinity ended up being a cross-cultural religious icon that spread through the Silk Roads, which were the trading routes of late antiquity in the early Middle Ages. And it was such a powerful and popular representation of divine glory that it is still with us even today. Well, I hope this video was enlightening. And if it was, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to this channel for more religious and historical content. And as always, stay thirsty for knowledge, my friends.